History is his story. Whether it's from Genesis to Revelation, from Israel to Malaysia, New Testament church to the persecuted church to the days they are living today, history is his story. Not that history, the meaning of history is his story, it's just a play of words. But I believe that God is in control of all the events and all the happenings throughout generation. From Genesis to Revelation, we are able to see a scarlet cord that runs through the books of the Bible, the events of the Bible, to tell us that Jesus is the Savior of the world. And God is redeeming the history of this world. Some of you say, how can history be his story? Because there is so much evil in history. There's so much hardship and calamity and tragedy. How can history be his story? My friend, God can turn any situation to fulfill his purpose. Man may be evil. Intentions of people can be bad. But God can take it because God is in control. God can use it because God wants to glorify His name. And God will bring history to His end, whereby His name will be glorified. And every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. No one need to force you to bow down. Yes. You have the freedom not to bow down and worship Jesus. Many people think that they have created history. They are in control. They didn't, do not need to bow down to anyone. You cannot force them to believe in Jesus. But that day will come, whether you like it or not, that your knee will definitely bow. And you must confess that Jesus Christ is truly the Messiah, the Lord. And we thank God that despite of the mess, M-E-S-S, -S, we can expect a miracle. That's the topic for this morning. Yes, situation may look like a mess. There can be volcano eruptions. There may be earthquakes. There may be plane crashes. There may be economy downfall. It can be hardship. We all face it every day, every situation. But God can turn your mess into a message today. A message that God can deliver us. A message that God has a purpose for our life. And if we receive the message, if we dare to believe God for the message, if you receive the word of God, God will heal your diseases, amen. God will heal your land, say of the Lord. If you receive the message that, that is God has spoken, if you receive the word of God and live by the word of God and declare the word of God, you will see salvation in your family. You'll be able to see that God can take the mess of our life and turn it into a miracle to glorify His name. Let me show you from the Word of God that things are not always how they appear to be. Because we need to come to the self-realization, I'm not that smart. I'm not that strong. I'm not that capable. And the challenges of life is not to come to destroy you. It's not to come to just to give you hardship. It's not a stage whereby God is being entertained because you are suffering. God is reaching out to you. Amen. History is His story. The history of your life, the happening of your life is God's dealing with each one of you, each one of us. 
that he wants to break through the ordinary, mundane, or even the most difficult times of our life to show you that Jesus is still alive. Amen. That Jesus is real. That he can restore what is lost. That he can save those who are away and those who are in sin. And God can bring healing and restoration. So if the mess is showing in your life, hang on to your faith, church. Hang on and believe God for that miracle. Even the bad, the worst, the ugly, the evil in your life. Today, let us receive that word and say, God, I want to expect a miracle. I want to align myself in the position whereby, God, you can work in and through my life. I want to see your hand upon my situation. I want to taste and know that God is good. The first example I want to share with you from the Bible is Peter in prison, where God turned his mess, the mess into a miracle. It's found in Acts chapter 12, and we have the scripture on the screen. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. And then he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. And now it was during the days of the unleavened brain. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter was therefore kept in prison and constant prayer. You see, so many times we know how to pray. We know what to pray. We know the importance of prayer. But prayer must come with faith to believe that God truly will answer prayer. You must expect. And we find that the... The early believers and the disciples were in constant prayer. They offered to God. They prayed to God for Peter's deliverance. The church came and prayed. Next. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, you are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it is his angel. Now Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door, they saw him, they were astonished. Why am I sharing this? You must recognize that when you are in prison, when one of your members, when one of your family is in captivity, whether it is in sickness or whether in hardship and financial problem, you are affected. Many people don't stay in prison. Yes, never have a privilege to stay in prison. But in our city, there are many people who are walking about free, but they are living like prisoners. They have been trapped in sin, in difficulties, in hardship. They may put a smile on their face, but it's just all plastic. It's all fake. It's all... Just to show you that everything is well, but inside there is a tsunami. Inside, the flood is rising, the wind is blowing. Do you know the hardship? We want to hope a wishful thinking that all is well. And then we pray in silence. We pray silent prayer or we pray. But do you really expect the miracle in your life? We can feel the burden. We can come and acknowledge when we need God. But just like this incident, in the midst of the prayer meeting, in the midst of serving and seeking after God, when the knock came at the door, 
when the miracle is knocking at the door, they didn't recognize it. My friend, the door is knocking. If you knock, the door will be open. When you seek, you will find. When you ask, it shall be given. How assuring. We can gain confidence in those words and the next thing to do is expect a miracle. But we choose to miss the miracle. We may land up still hearing the knock. We may still land up begging that God will answer our prayer. We may keep continue looking at the mess. Peter, you are in prison. The apostles are in prison and we have hardship. The next thing, uh, they are going to destroy us. They are going to catch us and we will be in prison. You know how often we talk like that? Even sharing our prayer requests. Oh, you, you know, you share your prayer requests. Your problem is so big. Huh? Let me share mine. Huh? Mine even bigger. So the prayer meeting become what? We put all our sorrow into a basket and then we go back with bigger sorrow. Oh, your sister so-and-so got cancer. Uh, sister so-and-so, you know, brother so-and-so got this problem. And we go to a prayer meeting with more prayer requests and then more burden. God wants us to bring our requests before Him and do not let our heart be anxious. As we trust in God, we come through Jesus Christ and we know that as we put our faith in God, God will answer our prayer in His own way, yes. But God will definitely answer. We keep talking about our mountains in our way. But have you ever believed that we can speak to those mountains? So many times our words are, we don't recognize our words are powerful. God created the universe by the spoken words. And we use our words so carelessly on our children, on people. In our circumstances, we say no hope, die. We complain and murmur. And those very words will come back to judge you. Those very words will come back to fulfill is self, self prophecy because the devil is very happy you are not declaring the word of god you are just declaring what he is happy to hear that oh you no hope i yeah i have this sickness i yeah you know i cannot get help and the devil say yes you cannot get help yes you are hopeless and we walk through our christian life disappointed defeated discouraged and God has a word for each one of us today. Don't miss the miracle. Somebody say amen. Don't miss the miracle. It may just be standing outside your door. Tell your neighbor, your miracle may just be standing outside your door. Good, you have woken somebody up. Get up, my friend. Do not slumber, do not sleep. Expect God to work in your life. You want your prayers to be answered. Keep looking. Keep expecting. Don't keep talking and, and meddling with your mess. You can miss the miracle even though it's standing outside your door. Today, bring your faith before God. God has set up, sorry to use that word, it's not playing games with us. God has allowed it. God has permitted it. God has set it up to fulfill His story in your life. Amen. God has set it up to fulfill His story for our church and our nation. God has set it up to fulfill His purpose in this earth, to bring it all to the end. Hallelujah. What was once a sad moment was just a beautiful setup. God reverse it for His glory. And we see it happening over and over again as the believers press on and keep on believing. You know what happened? 
your faith goes up to the next level. You say, Pastor, how come my prayers are not answered immediately? That will be babysitting. That will be baby feeding. That will be treating infants. But when we expect a miracle, when you keep knocking, and a good father, physical human father, would know how to give good gifts to the children. What more, your heavenly father? Will he deny you? Will he forsake you? Will he leave you alone? No. God will reverse the situation to bring glory to his name. When we can expect a miracle that comes with a message, what is the message of God in your life, in your situation? Receive that word today, amen. Speak the word today. God is sending His Word so that today He can heal your situation. Don't just believe in a good presentation of a sermon, a message. Believe the Word of God, amen. Hold on to the Word of God. Claim the Word of God and see how the Word of God can be fulfilled in your life, amen. But Leslie, you don't mind me sharing your testimony. But Leslie and Sister Esther, you join us in... J2, J2, concerns that how are you going to endure the journey? You have your physical challenges. How are you going to endure? Are you going to give up in the middle? Are we going to send you home early because your physical challenge in the middle of trip? None of that happened, isn't it? When we were coming down for the Mount Olives, the, to the Garden of Gethsemane, the walk was so steep and Brother Leslie was having difficulty, short of breathing. And we supported him. It's like, they say it's like Aaron and Moses supporting one another in prayer and walking down. And suddenly, Brother Leslie began to quote Psalms 1 to 1, remember? And both of us were quoting when I look to the mountains, where do my help come from? My help comes from the maker, the Lord of heaven and earth. He will not cause your feet to slip. He will watch over you. The Lord of Israel will watch over you. He will not slumber. And on and on, we begin to quote the scripture. And when Leslie began to speak forth the word, strength came to his legs. Amen. When he declared the word of God, power came, encouragement came. And you see him stronger, I believe. Declare the word. God heals your diseases. Your mess isn't a mess. It is just the beginning of a miracle. Amen. So encourage your neighbor and say, it is just the beginning of a miracle. Look to your right, look to your left. It's just the beginning of a miracle. We need to expect. We want to expect. We want to see that God, you can work, whether in small ways, it may be small to you, but the one who is facing it is a big mountain, it's a big challenge. God loves us, God cares for us. God will turn your situation, God will speak to you, God will heal your diseases. Let's come to Him. The next, next example, on and on, I can talk about David, I can talk about Moses, I can talk about Abraham, I can talk about the New Testament, I can talk about your lives over and over again how God have encouraged us and shown to us the mass can be a message of God's miracle for your life. Next one I take from the death of Lazarus. The death of Lazarus. And in the account of us, no, Mary and Martha, they were weeping because Lazarus was dead. And Lazarus' family was calling for a healer. Of course, their best friend, of course, the one that closest to them, of course, the miracle healer is Jesus. But somehow we find that in this story, Jesus seems to be deliberately delaying his visit to his beloved for four days. I mean, definitely is. Not that Jesus doesn't care, but he has a purpose. 
and in the context, we know that Jesus wants the name of God to be glorified. He has a purpose why he delayed answering your prayer. But are you going to be discouraged? Are you going to give hope? Are you going to keep on crying? He said he was glad he wasn't there because the glory of God was fixing to come down. Oh, it's hard to understand, isn't it, when we are in the mess? We wish that the pastor would come immediately. We wish that Jesus would answer my prayer immediately. We want an immediate answer, you know, like a microwave that will respond to your cooking, that will just, you know, remote control, just press on a button and then everything will happen. These days, the house is chaotic without remote controls. Hey, uh, where is the remote control? Who is sitting on it? I tell you, in my house, when the remote control doesn't work, I do not know how to switch on the TV or change the channel. I'll be sitting down there looking at some nonsense on the screen, and my wife say, you understand? Ah? You know what they're talking about? Ah? Are you watching? Ah? Don't know. How come you're still watching? Don't know the switch channel. Ah? When the microwave, the rice cooker breaks down, everybody have no dinner, all go out and eat. <laughs> Cannot cook. <laughs> Mother boycott. You know, can, don't know how to cook because everything must be instant. Everything must be fast. And then there's a delay, there's a disappointment. Then there's a delay, there's a frustration. And it caused so much weeping. It's very natural us to respond like Mary did. What a mess, what a mess. I don't know what your mess is, but Mary, my brother is dead. Then Jesus says he's going to live again. And you guess what Mary's answer? Mary's answer says, I believe. I believe in the resurrection. I will see him again. You know how that so sounds so natural has already stopped the miracle. Because the one that is standing right there in front of you, you are looking at him who has spoken the word, I am the resurrection. And yet you say, when the resurrection comes, I will see fail to acknowledge Jesus, you are the resurrection. When I trust in you, when I call upon you, when I look to you, I can see a miracle. Jesus is says, telling Mary and Martha, you are standing right in front of your miracle. Amen. And yet there is so much discouragement. You find that in the situation Jesus prayed, you won't find too many places where Jesus prays for a miracle. Not that he doesn't believe in prayer, but he knows the mind of the Father. I'm not asking you to be presumptuous. You jump down from KL Tower today, don't expect KL Tower to fall down, and don't expect you to be lifted up because you are presuming. There is no message, there is no word. I'm not talking about presumption. I'm not jump, talking about... A blind leap of faith, Jamla. <laughs> I'm glad it's not very high. Eh? <laughs> I may fall down. I'm not talking about jumping like that. I'm talking about when God asks me to jump, I know He will be down there to catch me. Amen. When God calls me to jump, I know that there is a message for me that He will save me. There is a word. There is encouragement, there is a message, and Jesus prays at the time because whenever he wants a miracle, he knows the Father, he knows the mind of the Father, he can ask the Father, and it shall be done. We say long prayers for big miracles, isn't it? We know how to say flowery prayers, long prayers, you know, oh, oh, oh. like we are constipating it. Constipation, no pay. Oh, 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 then, oh, God say, so poor thing, look at his face, Lord, therefore I will answer him. Ah, oh, say long press, flowery, be impressed, God, Lord. 
Say long press in your private closet. Say long press privately. Publicly, say short press. Amen. <laughs> now, don't be so happy, huh? Everyone go, thank you God for food. Amen. <laughs> Bless the children. Amen. You must have long press privately, short press publicly. Amen. Jesus said, short press, rise, be healed, go and sin no more, get up. Because he had prayed overnight. He had prayed to the Father. He had asked for God's glory to be shown. Right there, the miracle is standing before them. Why Jesus is praying? Because not for his sake, for those who are listening, because they just don't get it. I am the resurrection. I am standing before you. And yet you say that one day I will see my brother again. And Jesus demonstrated that. Just because Lazarus was already four days dead and buried. You know how bodies would sting and how bodies were smell light and but Jesus is still the resurrection and the life it doesn't matter hallelujah it doesn't matter if Jesus shows up late he's always on God's timing amen and today you can trust God Jesus was, wasn't crying. So many times we read this passage and say, Jesus wept. Oh, Jesus has compassion for us. Yes, he has compassion for us. But in this context, I must say, Jesus did not weep just because of compassion. I believe that he's groaning. He's disappointed in one sense because all he, he saw was people looking at their mess, their sorrow, their death, their, their despair. And they didn't understand that they have a saviour right in their midst. Amen. And today, Jesus may not be in the flesh, but Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. He is risen. Amen. His Holy Spirit is with us. He is for us. He is not against us. And whoever you are, Wherever you are, whatever you are facing today, turn to the Lord and say, God, I need you. I commit my life to you. I will live for you. I will commit my life to know your word because your word sends me the message. And with your message, I can expect your miracle. Some of you, your mess is created by other people, isn't it? If only God would remove these other people. If only God would make it, my life easier for me. My third example will encourage you, and this is my third story. I got so many other stories. This is about the life of Joseph. In the Bible, you know the story. Between Joseph and the other brothers, and it created a mess in Joseph's life. And I, you can go on and on and trace the mess, whether it is, it, it is in the pit or whether in, in uh, Potiphar's uh, household or whether in the temptation or whether in the hardship or the slavery camp or whatever it may be. You can blame it on other people. But finally, when Joseph could be united with his brothers who intend harm, who intend evil, whatever it may be, the words of Joseph reminded us that you can intend harm, but God intended it for good, amen. For good that he is doing right now, the saving of many lives. Your secret about people who are creating a mess for you is that, but God, amen. They may meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. 
God can do that in your life today. But if you hold on to unforgiveness of these people, if you hold on and wanting judgment and retribution for this kind of people, surrender it to God. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. You keep fighting. You keep challenging them. What do you get? More hardship, amen. Because you cause it upon yourself. But as you begin to surrender that people, that situation to the Lord, turn your enemies over to God. God can deal with them much better than you and I. He can turn it into something awesome. And in Joseph's case, it is the saving of many lives. I won't be surprised that you are able to see the saving of many lives as you release these people to the Lord. As you begin to recognize that, yes, they are evil people. They are people who will do harm to you. But today, whatever mess that they have caused in your life, you can just come to God today. There may be bumpy roads and dead ends and hurricanes and tsunami and volcanoes and plane crashes or whatever that drains you and puts you in a hopeless situation and despair. Give your enemies over to the Lord. Turn it over to them. And you know what happened? God can many times will use a situation to help other people. God can help, help use your situation to be a testimony for God. God can use your evil and the bad things that happen in your life to turn it for His praise and your glory. Hallelujah. And this is the biggest, nastiest black eye that you can give to Satan, our enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants to destroy you. He wants to rob. He wants to kill. But God wants to give us life. Amen. God wants to let His face shine upon you. God wants to be gracious to you. God wants to grant you peace in the midst of your trial and your difficulty. Are you overwhelmed with grief? God can turn that mess all of a sudden. Like the blind man, God can turn it into a miracle. Whatever the situation that you are facing today, or it is it really a mess? Or can it be a miracle in my life? Keep your faith in Jesus. The miracle comes knocking at your door. Receive the word of God and let your healing come today. The Saturday, a month ago, when I shared this message, a sister received the word of God together with her family and she came back with a testimony. She said, Pastor, my husband was facing a situation with all his workers. For four days, he could not solve a problem. They were in a mess. And that evening, we heard the word of God. We committed the mess to God. And within hours, in fact, I think it's minutes, the problem was solved. Amen. And that's not all, Pastor. My daughter who came to with me to a service, she had a situation that lasted so long. The college accuser of of something that she not do, and it will affect her future, her studies. And we prayed. We continued to pray, and for three days, we waited. And on the third day, the result, the, the, the response came back that my daughter has been not accused of that, that situation. In fact, it was another person who did that. And right now, she's able to continue her studies. You know, Pastor, she's going to become a lawyer. And if this is in her record, she will not even continue studying and will affect her future. But God has turned the mess into a miracle. And now our family is united again and our family is more closer to one another and most of all closer to God because of the miracle in our life. Amen. Give the Lord glory. Now you can expect God. But God Whatever the situation that you are talking about, that you have been murmuring and overwhelmed with, that your life is filled with so much mystery one after another. Yes, we are talking about his story, but your story can be a mystery. Your story can be misery. Your story can be so different. But today, Exercise of faith. 
the little faith that you have. Don't give up. Reach out. When God sees your faith, He reached down. He opens heaven's door. He pours forth His blessing so that you and I would know that God is real and He is alive. God has a comeback plan for you. Whatever the enemy have taken from you or robbed from you, today, surrender to God for a transformation, a new life, a new beginning. A new beginning is beginning for someone today. Hallelujah. You will taste a wonderful testimony and that you can truly affirm that God has turned your mess into a miracle. Your enemies, whoever they are, God has turned their hearts and God will use them to help many others. God can do it as you surrender. The trial that you are going through, the unforgiveness that you have in your heart, and say, God, I will lift my hands. I will let faith arise. Hallelujah. I will faith, let faith arise right now. Respond to the Lord this morning, the way that God has spoken to you. Let God speak to you by the Holy Spirit and give you a personal word and say, God, I need a touch. I need a healing. I need a transformation. I do not want to continue. Oh God, be where I am today. I want to believe you that today is a day of miracle. Today is a day of beginning for me because if there is Jesus, there is hope for me. Hallelujah. Jesus loves me and I want to trust in Him. I want to believe Him that the mass is a miracle that's standing at my door. And I want to surrender the situation to the Lord. Are you facing one today? Lift your hands for the miracle right now. Lift your hands for the miracle right now.